What is rent to rent and how can you be successful starting from scratch a rent to rent business? In this video, I'm going to be sharing the seven steps to being successful in the rent to rent business, but also talking about some of the problems, dangers and pitfalls of rent to rent so that you don't lose money. So firstly, what is rent to rent? Rent to rent is very simply in the name. It's when you rent a property with the agreement to rent it out for a higher amount. This is what many of my students use that have got little money that can't necessarily go and buy a house and rent it out. So instead what they'll do is they'll rent a building or they'll rent a house, but then they'll list it, for example, on Airbnb and they'll rent it out for a super rent, making a high monthly cash flow without actually owning the property. That's what it is. Or you might rent a, a three bed house and then you might rent it out room by room, turn the reception room into a bedroom. How do you turn a reception room into a bedroom or potentially by putting a bed in it? And now you've got four bedrooms. You pay the landlord £700 a month for the house, but you rent it out for five, £600 per room, making a considerable cash flow every single month without owning the property. So that's what rent to rent is. Now this, sometimes people say this is illegal. You can't do it. No one will do it. No, no, that's not true. I mean, for a start, many big companies use this exact same strategy. Even the likes of Premier Inn do this. They will rent a building, and then they will rent it out at a higher amount, making massive profits and high cash flow without actually owning the building itself. But there are pitfalls. And I'm going to be sharing in this video how to succeed. And I'm going to give you the seven steps to how to succeed. But I'm also going to give you the pitfalls. And then hopefully you'll be able to weigh up whether this is a strategy for you and at least go with your eyes open. So how do you start a rent to rent business? Well, the seven steps. The first thing is you need to establish what's your strategy going to be? Are you going to be renting a property and then renting out room by room as a HMO? In which case, okay, what's the demand for rooms? So if you're in Birmingham, for example, you might say, all right, I, can, I know I can rent houses in Birmingham for 800 pounds a month, three bedded houses, four bed houses, fine. But what's the demand for rooms? And you might need to go on as a start, go on to spareroom.co.uk, which is where people advertise themselves looking for rooms and see what their budgets are. See the competition, see other HMO landlords, speak to HMO management companies and ask them, what are the hotspots? Where are the professional people looking to rent rooms? That's the first thing. Also look at the legislation. So if you're wanting to do HMOs, you need to be aware of, will I need a HMO license if I'm doing this? Will I need planning permission? And different rules have got different areas. So you need to find out the rules. You need to work out your area. You need to work out your strategy. Maybe you're wanting to rent a studio apartment and then rent it out on Airbnb. You need to make sure that you've got the right contracts in place. If you're using an AST contract, which is a standard normal tenancy agreement, you can't rent a property on a normal tenancy agreement and then rent it out because that would be breaking standard tenancy act and it would be classed as subletting which is illegal so the contract that you're going to need is a rent to rent commercial lease agreement so that's step one working out your area the patch the rules getting your contracts getting your company set up so if you're going to start a rent to rent business and you're using a company let it would make sense to do it through a company not only is that going to give you tax advantages but it's also going to give you limited liability protection so that if things go wrong you're not necessarily on the hook so because you've got a company so that's the first thing step two is okay now you need to go and find a list of potential properties so go on right move go on spare room find existing hmos find apartments letting agents that have got properties where you think you know what this could work. I could rent that for a thousand pounds and looking at my market research, I'm pretty confident that I could rent it out for a hundred pounds a night, which is 3000 pounds a month. Work out your general occupancy rates and identify a list of properties. Identify a list of agents that you can call to pitch them and propose this as a strategy. So that's step two, get a list, get a spreadsheet. Step three, arguably the hardest step, is to phone the agents, to phone the landlords, and to go in and tell them your offering, tell them what your service is. And this, people that have got 
bad experience of this is usually because they're, they're, they're saying it wrong. If you ring up and you say, do you do rent to rent? You're just gonna confuse them and when you confuse them, you lose them. So you need to sell the concept to the landlords, sell the concept to the agents and tell them, look, I'm gonna rent your properties on a long-term rent. We'll start with one, see how it goes. And this is what's in it for you. This is what's in it for the landlord. Always put yourself in the shoes of the other person when you're negotiating your business and find out why is your offering actually gonna be good for them. Step four is once you've spoken to some landlords and some agents that are open to the idea, and why wouldn't they be open to the idea? If you've got an apartment that you're renting out for £700 a month and someone comes along and says, I'll rent it, oh, but by the way, it's going to be a company there, which means that the rent's going to come from my company. I mean, for a start, if it's a commercial lease, that means that you have no rights. So if you don't pay rent, they can evict you very quickly. Also, if you're running it, for example, on Airbnb, you're going to be keeping that property to a very high standard, having regular inspections, regular cleaning, so from the landlord's perspective, why would they rent it out to some working class tenant that might trash it when they could rent it to a company who are gonna be keeping it in super high standard and also paying the rent on time who haven't got tenancy rights. So there's a lot of advantages to the landlords, but step four is to go and meet the landlords, to go and meet the agents, to go and view the properties that are open and could potentially work and to work out your offering. So if you're viewing a property in Birmingham that's a studio apartment, Go and see it, look around, really do your market research and put forward your offer to the landlord and to the agent. And this is the scary part as well because if you're offering to rent a property, you need to be pretty damn well confident and sure that you know you can rent it out for a considerable higher amount using a strategy like service accommodation or HMO, house of multiple occupancy, to be able to ensure you're getting your profit. Once the agent or the landlord accepts your offer and says, yes, we can rent it to you, step five is getting your contracts right, making sure that your, your contracts have got things like break clauses in them, so that if you are struggling for whatever reason, if the market's not quite what you thought and you're like, oh my gosh, you could exit the contract. You've got maybe a three month or a six month break clause, making sure that the contract is, is clear, the landlord understands it, you understand it. Contracts are really important because in rent to rents and in any business, the devil is in the detail. And step six is marketing the property. Now a little tip, let's say you agree to rent a property as from the first of next month and you're gonna, your, your plan is to then rent it out on Airbnb. Before you even get the keys to the property, before the first, you wanna start marketing the property and getting bookings coming in before you've even got the keys. Because you know that you're gonna get the keys on the first, so why not open it up and start marketing it for tenants beforehand? It might be that the landlord will even agree to give you a grace period, or at least let you show people around the property prior to the actual contract and tenancy date starting. So step, step six is to market the heck out of the property. Put it on all of the online travel agencies, Airbnb, booking.com, late rooms. If it's a HMO, get it on spare room, get it on right move, market the heck out of it so that as soon as you get the keys, you can start making money from the property. And step seven is to systemize it. You need to make sure that you've got your management, you've got your cleaners, you've got everything in place. Now, the average rent to rent property should bring you in a minimum of 500 pounds a month. I did a survey with a group of my students that have attended my rent to rent training and the average rent to rent from the survey that we did was bringing in a profit of 925 pounds per month per property. So it's a very lucrative strategy if done right, but step seven is just to systemize it and make sure that it's as passive as you can get it. If you can just get three or four properties on rent to rents, that will potentially replace the average salary from the average person in Britain. So those are the seven steps to get a rent to rent and be successful. That's what rent to rent is. The pitfalls and the caveats to rent to rents, the dangers, I guess are number one, a pitfall will be finding a landlord or an agent that are prepared to work with you. That can be quite challenging, especially when you're new. So you need to learn how to position yourself in the right way. Caveat number two will be that you take on a property, but you can't rent it out. And now you're stuffed. So make sure that you do your market research, your due diligence, and have your break clauses. And the only thing worse than no tenant or no guest is a bad tenant or a bad guest. So make sure that you're vetting the people properly before they move into your property. Pitfall number three is that you might not have any money at all and you might not be able to pass the referencing. So if you're 
jobless, for example, with bad credit, who on earth is going to rent to you? And there's always a way around this. It might be that you need to bring on a guarantor. It might be that you need to partner with somebody. But generally speaking, a letting agent is going to want you to be earning the monthly rent times 30. So if the rent is a thousand pounds a month, they're going to want you to be earning 30,000 pounds in order for you to pass the sort of financial stress test, so to speak. If you're not earning that, maybe you could combine your, your income and your partner's income. So there's always a way around this. And I find in business, a lot of people that find excuses or say, I can't do it because I've got no references. I can't do it because I've got no company. Those are the types of people that will lose in this business. You've got to be someone that's, a, an entrepreneur is someone that solves problems and is someone that's creative, but that could potentially be a, a risk. Risk number four is your contracts. You might have just found the contracts online or bought them for £50 and they're not legally airtight. In which case, as soon as you set up this property and you start making good profit from it, the landlord might think, I could do this. But unless you're tied into a long, airtight, legally binding contract, the landlord might try and find problems with the contract and basically kick you out. So make sure that your contracts are drawn up right. And risk number five is that it's not going to be passive and it'll end up just being another job. If you've got you know, five properties and they're HMOs and you're managing it all yourself and your systems aren't good, you might be making a few grand a month, but then you're out of the frying pan and straight into the fire. You got into property because you want passive income. You quit your job, but now you've just got another job as a property manager. So make sure that you've got really good systems in place. Key safes, cleaners, online synchronized calendars, so that this is about as passive as you can get it, as well as hopefully passive and massive. So hope that video was helpful. If you want to come and spend a day with me learning the intricacies to rent to rent, I'm running a rent to rent crash course. I'll leave a link in the description. You can see dates and locations. You can come and join me in person or you can join me virtually over Zoom for the one day rent to rent training. And tickets are literally just one pound to spend a day with me learning all about this strategy in more detail. So I hope to see you there. I'll leave a link in the description and see you soon.